will continue to do th- that uh, through Victory Monday, as we call it here on 104.5 The Zone. We welcome to the hotline, the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline, Mike Keith, the voice of the Titans of the two-time defending AFC South champion Tennessee yes. Titans. Mm-hmm. Mike Keith, what's up? How are you? Well, we're pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. <laughs> the hot. I feel pretty good right now. It's pretty good. I'm here at Nissan Stadium and uh, getting ready to to do TV with the head coach and excited about that because I think he'll be excited to talk about his football team. I always hope he will be. Makes my job easier. And then at 6 o'clock, we'll do radio as well. Ron Slay was talking about the Titans' defense. And, and so during a break, I pulled the numbers. Last four games, Titans are 3-1 and one in their last four, obviously. Mike, they've given up 50 yards per game on the ground. 50. Mm-hmm. 3.1 yards per carry, two rushing touchdowns in four games. Through the air, they've given up a 60% completion percentage, which is exceptionally low in the NFL. 214 yards per game, one touchdown, seven interceptions. This defense is playing on another level. Well, they got healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing how that happens. Um, they got healthy during the bye. They got some guys back. They've got more fuel. They're able to play various people situationally, which not only keeps them fresh but plays to strengths. Um, I think I think we saw at different points early in the year, the first you know the first ten, eleven, twelve games, we saw these moments kind of pop up, and you thought this is who they can be, and I think now this is who they've become. It's very exciting. Yeah, this is this is who they become, Mike. And I, I was just saying, like, you look at a team like the L.A. Rams and you see all the big names and the, the guys that they, they, they seem to be able to get on the team and come together. But this team, the way this defense is playing, this is this right here, these guys are, are bred right here. You know, besides guys like Janoris Jenkins, everybody else is pretty much Titans home, homegrown. You know what I'm saying? Don't you need that when you have a defense that's – coming alive like they are, you need those guys to try to deliver on their names. And I think Kevin Byard is doing it. Jeff Simmons is doing it. Danico's coming in. Now you got Bud. Like, it's all starting to come together. How good is that for this defense? It's fantastic because part of what you have, Ron, is you have several guys who are very capable pass rushers. Mm-hmm. And, okay, you're going to double-team Harold Landry. Danico Autry's going to get you. Yeah. And you, you're going to double team Bud Dupree, then Harold Landry's going to get you. And if you don't double team Jeffrey Simmons, he's going to ruin the play for it starts. And they've got some guys who are excellent blitzers as well. Uh, it's it's the multifaceted nature of the defense and the improved speed. And then you're able to bring in a guy like David Long, who's missed six games and he plays, you know, that third down linebacker position, and, and he plays a really good game and intercepts a pass. And, yeah. you know, Crookshank battling the tight ends. And, you know, maybe he gives up a catch here and there, but everything's a fight now. What I like so much about what this defense is doing is when you start at the two-yard line against them, like the the Dolphins did, when you start at the seven-yard line, it's like, well, you you pick up a first down. Good for you. You pick up another first down. Good for you. Well, guess what? You picked up back-to-back first downs. You feel really good. You're 73 yards away from the end zone. (laughs) (laughs) And if this defense continues to not allow big plays, you're going to have a hard time driving the ball down the field on them consistently. That's what the best defenses that I've seen in this league do is they make everything hard that – even when you have success, you feel like it was hard. And how often do you hear people talk about the development that Vrabel and his staff are, are doing with these guys? When you come to as far as in as, as plugging guys, 88 players playing, but you, you're able to take a third-string guy and plug. You don't change what you do. You just plug in and develop those guys. Like Maybe guys like Golden Tate wasn't ready, so – you got to continue developing, but the guys that are ready, they're plugged out there and, and expected to produce, and they do. Well, and part of what you're seeing too, Ron, is you're seeing guys, I mean, like Foreman. Mm-hmm. So Foreman comes in right at the start of November, and he plays a little bit and rotates some against the Rams and rotates some and plays a little bit against the Saints and then against the Texans and 
you know, he loses a fumble in the game at New England, but he but he has a pretty good game. Well, now he's been playing football with this team for two months. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's used to being hit. Now he's used to how Monday's going to feel after a game. Now he's looking for someone coming up behind him to knock the ball out, and he's not going to allow it to, to happen. The only way you can really get good at football is playing football. And when you haven't been playing, it's hard. Well, now all of a sudden, they've got all these guys who've played a bunch of football, and then you're getting a bunch of guys who are coming back who are really good at football. Well, now what you have is depth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, you have depth. And you're getting ready to get more of it back on offense. You've had a bunch back on defense for the last month, and you see what that's produced. Yeah. Depth and uh, and and a little luck when it comes to health and and right. all of that kind of uh, plays into a, a championship run. You talked about getting that back. Obviously, a big topic of conversation is Derrick Henry and him sure. coming back. And so I think tomorrow is is week nine from his surgery. Um, you know, the the medical experts will say it's a six to eight we kind of recovery time. What do you expect or what do you expect the Titans to do with Derrick Henry? Well, I think, you know, Mike gave as much of it as he's given during the whole process. And yeah. that is, he, he said that they were going to take a look at what they were going to do as far as opening the window. And let's make sure everybody knows what the window is. Yes. You come back from injured reserve, you can be designated to return, and you can practice for three weeks before they have to make a decision on you. So do they want to start that this week? If they do, Wednesday's the most logical day it happens. Um, do, they, do they decide, you know what, we'll start it next week and, and have the idea based on if they get a buy – You know, he would have, like, if they started this week and he doesn't play and then they get a bye, he would have had three weeks of practice to get ready for the divisional round. Right. Yeah. So now if you're feeling good enough about it, and and I think, you know, what we've seen from from them is we've seen them be very quiet. We've seen them be very patient. Uh, There haven't been any pronouncements about anything, so we – you know, we know what we think we know, but we don't know a lot of specifics. And now they're going to say, okay, are you ready to go out and play football? And I, I've said this all along. I've said it on your show before. Until he starts playing football, everything else is just optimism, right? But he's got to go out and he's got to cut and he's got to do the things Derrick Henry does. And, you know, that's got to be part of the deal. And then what you get into is how does he respond? What's the day after like? And then what's the day after that like? Are you sore? Is there a problem? Are you this? Are you that? Um, These wins have given them time. And that's the beauty of this entire situation and the beauty of Deontay Foreman and Dontrell Hilliard and Jeremy McNichols. They have done the job that if you say, okay, he's not going to play this week. We're going to wait till the playoffs. I don't think anybody feels uncomfortable. I think they say, well, okay, let's be smart. And then then if you could have him for three more games potentially, oh, my. Hmm. How, oh, my. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> like I get, oh. <laughs> I know, how, right? Uh, yeah. How how much of that process, obviously, you've, you've watched guys come back. You've been around this league for a long time. How much of that process – do you have to see him get reps in a game? Because there's so much talk about, oh, well, what about a series or two, you know, coming up this weekend if he can? Like, how much of that process in his injury do you think is actual game speed like reps? I don't worry about that with him, Dawn, just because of sort of how he is. I think it comes down to to a certain point. What do the doctors say? What do the trainers say? And then – most importantly in this probably, what does Derek say? Yeah. Does he want to go get some? You know, does he – I mean, he didn't take any in the preseason, and he did just fine. You know, that, <laughs> That's a good point. that was the whole thing is that, you know, it, does he need it? I mean, Adrian Peterson never played in the preseason. 
he, he would just show up and go, but, you know, he was practicing. So does he feel like, hey, I want to go out and get hit, and then if we win the ball game, then I have two weeks to the next game. I, I think a lot of that goes into it based on who Mike Vrabel is as a head coach, because having been a player, Don, I think he's going to talk to his guy and say, what are you thinking? And I, to me, if I know and, – and listen – I'm not in the building right now, okay? So I have not seen him work out. I haven't seen him at all since the surgery. So I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking out of school here. But I do think the one thing that Mike is great about in these situations is he wants it to be collaborative. He wants everybody to feel good about what's going to happen. Will they make a suggestion? Sure they will. But will, will his opinion count in all of this? I would be stunned if it didn't. That's normally how it works with Mike. Voice of the Titans, Mike Keith with us uh, every Monday at 4 o'clock. Uh, the coaches show coming up, the Mike Vrabel show coming up tonight. Uh, Mike will be listening, man. Well, thank you. Hopefully people will submit their questions via Twitter, at Titans Radio. Uh, the head coach will be on with us. As will the voice of the Houston Texans, Mark Vand- Vandermeer, who – Brings a 4-11 and team in that already has a victory over the Titans. He mentioned that like 19 times in our interview. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who hasn't quit? They I mean, that team hasn't quit. quit. No. Nope. no, Cully's team's not going to quit. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's just – I think David Cully's a good coach, and if they are keeping him, they're doing a smart thing. There he is, Mike Keith. Thank you, Thanks, Mike. Vaught. Appreciate it. Thanks, Vaught. See you guys. All right. Boys of the Titans, uh, Mike Keith. There you go. Uh, <laughs>